Hi, I'm Melissa Cobb. Come fly with AOPA. You are going to love the sound of this. That's the AOPA sweepstakes Cessna 170 running with its brand new 195 horsepower Continental Prime engine, certified IO370 engine, and the new Hartzell Trailblazer constant speed prop. So Dave Stutes, he's the owner of Stutes Aviation and the STC holder for this engine prop combo on the 170. He's been in Georgia for the last couple of weeks uh, doing the installation with the folks there at the Barnstormers workshop. And I gotta say, great job, Dave, and all of you at Barnstormers. Man, that sounds great. So you all stay tuned because the first flight is coming up soon and we're gonna bring you that right here from Fly with AOPA. Well, there's another aircraft that you're gonna to wanna to be updated on and that is the Vans Aircraft RV-15. So during a recent webinar with EAA, Vans confirmed uh, some more aspects about the aircraft. If you remember, the aircraft is a high wing design, which is, is a departure for Vans and it's also been created to be a backcountry beast and off airport operations type aircraft. So uh, it's gonna have two seats and at least 200 pounds of baggage, 900 pounds of useful load or more, and it's gonna have a top speed and level flight of 140 knots or more. It's gonna carry 60 gallons of fuel in two wing tanks. Now they have made some changes from what many folks saw of the aircraft debut at AirVenture. And those changes include moving the flap handle to the floor, the wings are removed slightly aft, fuselage is gonna be a little bit longer, and the landing gear taller, among a bunch of other changes to the aircraft. Recently, we brought you an update on Reed Hillview Airport in Santa Clara County, California. And remember, Santa Clara County has banned 100 low lead at its two airports. This week, we take you to San Martin Airport, that's the other one in the county where the fuel has been banned, and we bring you the story of a business owner on the field. Hi, I'm Dan Neal. I'm the president of San Martin Aviation at San Martin Airport, which is Echo 16 for the pilots in the group. Well, we're not able to sell 100 low lead. That was banned, sale of 100 low lead was banned by the County of Santa Clara. So here at San Martin and at Reed Hillview Airport, both, both in Santa Clara County, we're not able to sell 100 low lead. So our answer to that was to replace it with the Swift Fuels product, the UL94, which is what we're selling now. So about some percentage of the airplanes in the fleet cannot run on the UL94. So we occasionally get airplanes, transient flyers who come in and can't fuel here, which is a business loss for us, but it's also an inconvenience for most of them. They'll have to go outside of the county to buy fuel. for. Other transient pilots who can use the UL-94, some of them would have to buy an STC to, to switch to the fuel, so that becomes an inconvenience as well. The business impact is that we don't sell nearly as much UL-94 as we did under low lead, and what we do sell has a much lower profit margin. We are essentially operating at cost. So we went from 100 low lead as a profit center for our FBO to UL-94, which became a, either zero or, or a cost center at times. It's not a great thing from a business standpoint. We had one misfueling incident, which the owner happened to catch his mistake before he flew the airplane, so that became a non-issue. The pump and the island, the self-serve aspect, are pretty well labeled so you would have to know you're doing it. The stretch would be if somebody came in here transient who hadn't noticed the NOTAMs or the services in the, um, the, you know, the chart supplement saying what fuels are available at the airport. There, there really is no resolution other than, you know, one comment is that the FAA probably should have been a little more proactive on unleaded fuels. We phased it out. I, I think the last time that we could buy un, or leaded fuel for a car was probably 1996. And we've been doing the same thing, you know, for the last 30 years. So, why, you know, why haven't we come up with unleaded solutions that are drop in ready to go? And that's what we're really looking for is one that we can put in the tanks and distribute without STCs, without other paperwork where pilots can just buy it. 
Well, many of you have commented asking us for an update on the unleaded fuels front, and in particular on G100UL, so that's the fuel being manufactured by General Aviation Modifications Incorporated, or GAMI for short. And so we've asked AOPA Senior Vice President of Government Affairs and Advocacy, Jim Kuhn, to join us today to bring us up to date on two things, the industry government effort to find a drop-in replacement for Avgas, and also specifically on GAMI's G100UL. Jim, thanks for joining us today. Uh, absolutely, happy to be here, thank you. Yeah, so uh, what, what's the latest? Start us off first with that uh, industry government initiative, uh, and then, then get specific with us on, on GAMI's fuel. Sure, absolutely. You know, there were a lot of things were happening in uh, last year in 2022. You know, AOPA established its uh, Avgas Coalition to help communicate what's going on with this uh, unleaded fuel effort. Uh, industry and the FAA stood up a, an in initiative called the uh, Eliminate Aviation Gasoline Lead Emissions, or EGLE. And that is that consists of uh, a whole host of uh, industry, uh, general aviation industry players along with the petroleum industry and the FAA. So that is that is now fully operational and there's a lot of work going on in that area, including testing uh, the, the Piston Aviation Fuel Initiative is a section of the EGLE program. And that's where the FAA uh, conducts and evaluates tests on, on potential fuels. So in addition to uh, the EGLE Initiative and the Avgas Coalition, uh, the EPA came out last year uh, with a proposed endangerment finding. Uh, the industry, uh, as I think everyone knows at this point, we're, we're not opposing lead and, and aviation gasoline, but we do want a safe and smart transition. That is really a, a key in this whole area. And one of the most profound things that happened uh, after so long and so many years of, of testing and evaluating fuels, the FAA uh, approved GAMI's G100UL uh, for virtually every uh, make and model in the uh, general aviation piston fleet. So we're very excited about that. Uh, now it's incumbent upon GAMI to commercialize that fuel and get it out to market for pilots. So that's a that's a whole other process in itself. That's what GAMI's working on right now. They have their STCs available on their website. You can go there and, and uh, purchase an STC from them. In addition, uh, also in the STC world, uh, Swift Fuels um, out of West Lafayette, Indiana, uh, they anticipate an STC approval uh, on their 100R fuel uh, sometime this year. So that's progress. And as I alluded to earlier, the Piston Aviation Fuel Initiative has two fuels currently being tested and evaluated there, uh, an Afton Phillips 66 solution and a BP Lyondell, BP Racing uh, Lyondell Basil solution. So they're making progress. They're, they're going through initial testing now supposed to be completed sometime in, in February. And if they make it through that process, then they'll go into uh, full board testing, which the FAA uh, believes that that'll take about, take us to sometime in April of 2024, uh, if a fuel makes it through that entire process. So that's where we are right now. It's, uh, you know, we have set a, a, a date of, of having a fleet-wide solution uh, no later than 2030. Uh, we're very hopeful that um, we can get there much sooner than that. Uh, Pre AOPA President Mark Baker is the uh, industry chair for this EGLE initiative, and, uh, and we're doing everything we can to, to move this process along, uh, rid of the bureaucracy, and, and get this done for uh, general aviation. Well, thank you, Jim. That's a great update on all the fronts, the STC front and the EGLE front and lots of progress being made. And we've got to still sit and hold tight because it's going to be a little bit, but uh, sounds promising. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jim. From alternative unleaded fuels to alternative power, here's the latest on the electric aircraft front. So Bi Aerospace has received FAA approval that's going to pave the way for certification of its eFlyer 2 under the FAA's Part 23 certification standards. So what's up next is the testing and compliance phase. Well, from new aircraft to the end of an era for another aircraft, that's the Boeing 747. So the Boeing 747 rolled out of, in production in 1967, and the last 
production Boeing 747 has been delivered and went to Atlas Air and uh, it was a freighter version that they're going to be using. So the Jumbo Jet was the world's first twin aisle airplane and it's become known as Queen of the Skies. Now the 747-8 is the longest commercial aircraft in service according to Boeing and no doubt the 747 has inspired maybe even thousands of pilots uh, you know to pursue a career in aviation and, and as we know aviation the love of that is just absolutely contagious and there's one pilot and content creator on Instagram and YouTube who hopes that him sharing his passion for flying helps spark an interest for others meet fly with Bruno I fell in love with aviation when I was a five-year-old um, I loved aviation ever since uh, but back in Brazil where I'm from it wasn't that easy to pursue a career or just a hobby of aviation so I chose a different career path. Even so, throughout my teenage, teenage years and my, as I grew up, I kept educating myself in aviation. I always liked uh, watching films, movies, reading about it, and, and whatnot. After I moved to the US, thanks to a work, uh, 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 career opportunity back in 2015, uh, I met a pilot who's now a friend of mine, a very good friend, who uh, motivated me to go pursue my dream 30 years later. So I was 35 when I joined the flight school in Long Island, New York, Farmingdale. I, uh, in five months later, I got my private license. I started renting planes and flying different places, experiencing different runways, airports, uh, weather, all kinds of stuff. And then six months later, I decided to get my instrument rating. And that's when I decided or realized I was committed to aviation for life. So instead of renting planes, I decided to get my own plane which I'm standing right next to now. This is a Grumman Cheetah, uh, Grumman AA5A Cheetah. It's a 1977 model. And I remember pulling up to the, next to the plane who was tied down, which was tied down on, on the ramp. And I looked at the tail number, which back then I didn't know. And it said 84U. And I look at the 4U and it says, you know what? I, I thought maybe it's talking to me. It's for me, so I'm gonna do it. And it was the best decision I've ever done in my life. It's a plane that has taken me anywhere that I wanted to go without ever leaving me stranded or um, giving me any, any headaches. And I always fly with my little buddy, Mars, who the internet helped me name. And so it's Bruno and Mars flying everywhere. Ever since I started flying, because it was such a, a, a big dream for me and such a, a, a fulfillment, I started sharing my journey through Instagram and YouTube. And um, my, my purpose in doing that is to show everyone else that perhaps love aviation but hasn't taken the first step, that it's possible. I'm just an average guy who works nine to five, but still decided to pursue his dream, was able to get through his licenses, to, uh, got my, my private and my instrument, and even my plane. And whenever I'm not working uh, and I'm not home, I'm flying. I wanna be proficient, I wanna be current, but most importantly, flying is like a therapy to me these days. And whenever I'm up there, all of my problems and everything else stays on the ground, literally, and it's the best part of my day. My main goal is to show how fun aviation can be, whether you have it as a hobby or as a career. I take them on every, every place I travel, all of the amazing things that you can only do on a plane, for instance, flying over the Niagara Falls or taking a weekend trip to Florida and back and obviously flying to Sun and Fun, Oshkosh and other fly-ins. So I get a lot of messages of people that basically say that I just helped uh, show them that aviation is worth it and all the, the, the effort that you put into it is worth it. And there's something very fun on the other side. I'm super thankful for that and that's what keeps me going and I post every day because I know that somewhere in the world somebody's watching this and thinking huh if he can do it so can I and this is the sole purpose of everything I do is to inspire more people to get into aviation because it's the most amazing thing I've ever done. If Fly with Bruno or anyone else has inspired you to learn to fly we can help. The AOPA Foundation's 2023 scholarship program is coming to a close on February 10th, so you need to apply now. Get that in before the deadline. The scholarships range from $2,500 to $14,000, and they're for primary instruction, advanced training, as well as aviation maintenance. You can learn more and apply, actually, at the link down below in our description. 
Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Fly with AOPA. As always, be sure to like and subscribe so you stay up to date on all our latest videos. And this week, we leave you with footage submitted by viewer Ed and his wife flying with their dog Lola in their Piper Pacer. Now, be sure to send in your favorite flying videos at the link in the description. You just might see them on an upcoming show. If you're not already an AOPA pilot, we'd love to have you join us. Just click the link at the end of this video. We'll see you next week.